All right. So I think you guys are all set, and I am going to leave. Okay. Hi, hi, Jamie. Bye, Jamie. Thank <laughs> you, Roxanne. Okay. You're welcome. Good night. Hi. I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is 5.32, February 4th, 2021. <sighs> okay, so I figured if we did roll call and I just said your name and your position, everybody can just say here, make it easier. Um, Lori and Han Harry, that's me, I'm market manager. Jamie Allen, assistant market manager. Here. April Brunel, treasurer, is not on the call yet. Melody Ferris, secretary. Here. Ellen Grenger, committee member. Was that, was that Ellen? No, I don't think Ellen is on the call yet. Uh, Pete Harry, committee member. Present. Handball, committee member. Present. Bill Thorne, committee member. Present. And we also have our town liaison, Linda Davis, present. All right. Do we have any citizens' comments? I, I don't believe so, unless Linda has something to say as a citizen. <laughs> uh, informational items. Uh, this is Pam. I'll just say that uh, Meredith Rondash, who was interested in joining the committee, couldn't make the meeting tonight, but she's still interested in joining the committee. So I will make sure or somebody can make sure to send her the information for the March meeting. That would be good. Sounds good to me. She is on the council's agenda Wednesday night. Oh. Can that be postponed yeah. one month? Sure. I've already drug postponed it until this meeting. So, um, I, can I say something? Yeah. Jamie. So, um, so what party is she, Linda? Because I haven't heard anything about She's her. She's unaffiliated. Unaffiliated. Okay. So then she doesn't have, okay. Yeah. All right. So this is so this is the thing that I feel about this committee and this and and it, because the committee is actually a lot of work. If if and I know that I, Linda, I'm correct in saying that we really have no choice. Correct? This is a town council decision. You have no choice, but this you have input for sure. Right, and because it's because the committee takes active people, and we're I know we're losing Melody in May. Um, I really feel like it would be nice if we could at least talk to this lady as a group to see if she is the kind of person that's going to be active in the group. But I don't know if we're allowed to. Yeah, um, yeah, you can. I just thought Pam had already talked to her, so. Okay. Um, Did you chat with her, Pam? No, I, I, I never said I talked to her. I have emailed with her and messaged with her on Facebook, and she seems very interested. She asked several times, you know, am I going to get the login information for tonight? Do you need my email? What time is the meeting? And then today she said she couldn't make it. So I'm thinking to give her the benefit of the doubt, something could have come up. I mean, we don't know. We don't know her, so she didn't volunteer any information. Would it be possible to do, like, a a non, I don't know if that's allowed, like a non-town meeting, but just invite her to do a Zoom with us kind of on the side? You could, um, one or two of you could, sure. Okay. All right. Maybe that's something that we could do then, Lori, as yes. market manager absolutely. and assistant manager and kind of chat absolutely. with her. Absolutely. Get a feel for her. Yeah, absolutely. It's not even getting a feel for her. I feel like it's more of an informational thing for her so that right, so she realized. Summer, Summer market is a is a, a big time commitment. I mean, not so much last year, but the preparation for it is a huge time commitment, at least as of COVID. Um, the being there all the time isn't 
as much as it was prior years. But yeah, I just, I think it's only fair to let people know what a time commitment is. It is. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah, I did try to tell her in the emails and stuff, and she seemed pretty unfazed by it all. So she, uh, I think she's a chef at Daniel Packard, so I think she's used to busy. And I, she mentioned that Wednesdays were her day off. So, yeah, it'd be great, I think, to give her a yeah, chat. absolutely. I'm up for it. So, Pam, if you just, um, do you have a phone number for her? I don't. Um, I'll email it. Her, I'll email and ask her to ask her to send it to me myself. So yep. her email's in the list. We would have the um, if you email Roxanne, she will have her application. Okay. Wait, it's Meredith who is tall, ordered chocolates, and works at the Daniel Packer Inn. Does she live in like Fox Run or something or Lakeside? I don't know where she lives, but I know she works at Daniel Packard. Yeah. I don't know about the chocolates. Okay. I, I know her. I've bought chocolates from her before, and I think we're Facebook friends or something. She's on Facebook as Meredith Ann, so I don't actually have her last name. Yes. That's how I found her that way. Yep. Cool. So, all right. So then I will contact her and see if she wants to meet with Jamie and I, and we'll just talk. So we know she makes good chocolate. That's one. That, she's already in, according to Linda. Chocolate? Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So review of prior minutes. So, Lori, if we can just do that quick, and then if, and then Linda doesn't have to take her off their agenda. Right, Linda? You said she's on your agenda for next Wednesday? Yeah. So just let me know whether I need to take it off or not. Oh, okay. yeah. I'll, I'll email her tonight after the meeting. And okay. then... Good. Uh, so okay. So review and approval of prior minutes. Did everybody go through them? Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to move the minutes of the January meeting, January 2021 meeting. Oh, uh, December 3rd, 2020. That's right. December, yes. Mm -hmm. December 3rd, 2020. Regardless of the date, I still second it. All in favor? Aye. Everybody's hands are raised that I can see. Okay, yay. All right. It is unanimous. I see Ellen. All right. So April is not on the meeting. So unless Pam has some sort of input for the treasurer report that she wants to throw out. We I can do notice. not. Um, okay. We should ask her to have Ian run a report so that we have an idea how much money's in our account. I have that actually. Um, I didn't know if I was like supposed to send it to everyone because I'm uh, not quite sure. I know it got sent to, I thought it got sent to you. Is it the one from Roxanne or the one from Ian? Yes. So Roxanne, no, from... yeah, Roxanne will send a purchase order report. Ian will send the amount of money in our account. I th thought that that was on there too, though. Okay, I didn't take. I didn't get a chance to take a look at that. There's a year-to-date report. Is that the one? I do not know. All right. Well, I'll. You have this email though, correct? I don't think I do. Okay. No, you don't. All right. I will forward this to you. And actually, I'm not even sure where the agenda is on Zoom. All right. I have uh, forwarded it. All right. It's so not on Zoom. It's on the town's, uh, it's on the meeting portal. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. So. Is, is anybody else having a little difficulty understanding the uh, what was put in the minutes in terms of finances? I mean, I, I'm no CPA, but I mean, it was a little hard to figure out. 
I'd have to go back and look at it. Can we? So the we... muni system in general is hard for just everyday people like us to figure out in general. So I think that that's part of the problem. That's why it's easier to have April's reports. So are we still all good with the vote? Well, are we voting on the- Just that uh, they're correct. I believe, like, yes, Linda? There's this encumbrance of 7,227. I mean, I don't even know what the heck that means. Does anybody uh, this know? is Pam. I think that means that is the amount of money that was uh, taken up by purchase orders. It doesn't mean it was spent. It was allotted to purchase orders. Okay, that makes sense. Why do we have to vote on the money? Why do we have to vote on the budgets? I don't think we do. I just think oh, we need no. to understand them. Oh, okay. I thought, yeah. Lori, I thought you were trying to take a vote. Okay. Oh, no, no. I meant the vote for the, the minutes from the previous meeting. I just didn't know if anybody wanted to amend anything or not. Oh, okay. So, all right. So the treasurer report, we will put off until the next meeting when April is here. Uh, comments from the committee members? Anybody? No, everybody's good. It does say available budget 12,000 and change. Does That's what that. Right, and if you add in the encumbrances, so on the second document, it lists all the purchase orders. Mm -hmm. The value of the open purchase orders is yes. 7,000 something. So there's 3,000 for the bags. There's $1,400 for Our Lady of Lords because the purchase order was open, but we never used it. So the, yeah, the total amount after the after the encumbrances, what is open and got to come out, we, we still have $12,173 and 57 cents. And, uh, you know, again, I, I can't make sense of this, but the, the town gave me a check for putting the um, wash stations together. I don't see that on the purchase orders or, and, and maybe that's under the Bank of America category. I'm not sure. But anyway, it may I'm, not, it, it may not specify who the money went to. It's probably just a full total of what was spent. No, there would have to have been a purchase order made out for Bill. So if your purchase order was closed out, maybe that's why it's not on the list. Because you, if you look at the list, you can see there's one for me. There's one for Linda. So uh, we'd have to ask April for the details on this. But yeah, there, would, there should be a purchase order for every check that was written. I guess, right. we just, I guess we just have to wait. Yes, I would think. All right. Okay, so no comments from com committee members. Anything on old business? I figured if we were going to have old business, that might be Pam. I didn't know if you had any uh, you're good. old no. stuff. Nope, I think I'm good. All right, new business, 2021 summer. Woohoo! Let's go for it. All right, so we are choosing dates. Um, I know last year, some people, because there's no produce, wanted, we had, thought maybe we should start it a week or two later. Pam said um, her best business is in June. I know we don't have a whole lot of produce, but then Jamie and I were talking and we said maybe because there's no produce, that's why other vendors have a better month in June. So do we want to start June the third? Second. Second. This is this is Pam. I 
I don't think it has anything to do with the produce vendors. It has to do with the number of markets competing in the area is what I think. So in June, there's very few markets. Most markets don't start till July. So if somebody wants to go to a farmer's market, they come to us. And then in July, maybe a market that's closer to them opens up and they might go to that market. So, and of the total number of vendors that are affected by no produce, it's just the produce vendors. Okay. But, and there's five, there's five Wednesdays in June. There are. So do we want to start second of June or do we want to start ninth of June? Anybody? I vote we start June 2nd because we know attendance tails off in September and it's getting dark. Jamie? I don't care when we start. I just don't want to go more than 16 markets. So, which means we would be ending and set up, you know, we'd be ending like September 15th, I think then, which is mid-September, which I'm, I'm fine with. I just don't want to go more than 16 markets. By the end of the market, I think we're getting worn out, so... All right, so then does anybody else have any comments? Any. Linda? I was just going to say, if we go June 2nd, we have to make sure we have plenty of vendors because we'll always see the complaining that we don't have produce, which is a given. But um, we have they have to have a reason to be there, so... Um, as long as we have other vendors, which I don't see why we wouldn't if starting June 2nd versus June 9th, I mean, you would think everybody would still come. Only the produce people were, have an issue. But we always get the complaint about the produce. No, that's never going to stop. So the other thing I can tell you is that the second market is typically better than the first market in terms of attendance and sales. It's like people have to get into the swing of things. So that would give us four good June markets before all the other markets open up. That's fine with me. I'm happy with it. So, all right, sorry. All right, so June 2nd, 9th, 16, 23, 30. Yep. That is July 7, 14, 21, 28. 7, 14, 21, 28. And then August 4, 11, 18, 11, 18 25. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16 brings us to the 15th of September. Is, do we all feel like we always end on September 15th? Is that, isn't that the day we did last year too? 16th. Oh. Yeah, we're starting one different and we're ending one different. All right. All right, so I will make a motion to have the first farmer's market on the first Wednesday in June, June 2nd, 2021, for 16 weeks, ending on September 15th, 2021. All in favor? I'll, I'll second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I always mess that part up too. All right, so it looks unanimous. I'm in Mel favor. Melody? I'm guessing Melody is good. Yes, I'm good. Sorry, I'm oh. trying to type in on something else. I'm oh, good. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. I was, I'm trying to click screens and I don't know what I'm doing. All right. All right. So that was unanimous. All right. So themes. Um, Themes kind of have always tied into, well, our entertainment's always tied into themes. Um, I have entertainment, Roxanne put entertainment under the budget, but um, right now I know we definitely can have music. 
So are we are we all good with having music back? Yes. I like the idea of having music back, but I'm not clear on where the market's going to be. Are we going to be back, it's, under, back where we we're not? Year? We're not going back up to the top. We are staying at the bottom. So where would the music be set up? Like on the hard top? There's, there's going to be a stage or a, no, a um, gazebo, Fred said. So okay. it can be set up in the gazebo. We can actually set them up wherever we want. I That's... Um, the planning of where everything's going is up in the air right now. That's not something I figured we need no, to No, we definitely don't need to figure out the, the nuts and bolts logistics tonight. I just don't want to create a situation where if it's going to be like on the blacktop area where all the vent people wait in line there. No, 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 no. And stuff like that. And then the vendors say it's too noisy. They can't hear people. No. So I just want to make sure that we've got a good spot for it before we yeah. commit to it. Okay. And, um, kids activities i know jamie go ahead jamie so well, hold on I'm, am i on okay so you know how i feel about the kids activities i just think it's really important i think it's one of our biggest draws i think it's one of the reasons that our market became as big as it is because it became a family event saying that we also don't know what the summer is going to look like yet um, but i have already started coming up with ideas for kids activities for every single market. Um, I, that is something I kind of feel like we can wait to last minute, at least with the things that we would do, um, unless we're gonna reach out, like Melody found her some really good vendors um, 2019, like if we could bring some of those back. I think that we can kind of wait, not, I don't wanna say last minute, but I think by April, we could kind of make a decision on that. April, May, okay. beginning of May. I think that we have enough time um, even if we couldn't get some of the vendors, like Melody got um, the bubble people, Melody, um, the, the, so even if we couldn't get some of those, we could throw in face painting. But I would, if, if it's allowed, I, I, I doubt it. I still think we're going to be wearing masks, but I would like to have something um, for the kids. Even if it's a good, you know, even if it's on Hometown Heroes and we give all the kids fire engine hat, you know, fireman hats. Right. Things like we that. don't think that there things there's not contact with. Right. Even if it's stuff like that, I just think it's a huge draw for us. We so. could actually think about um, what if they did take home projects. We put little bags together. That's a of great idea. Take home projects. Yeah, that's at least a we great idea. That. Yep. Um, so that is a great backup plan. I love that. So, and that way yeah, we put them in gallon bags and just send them home with the kids with a little bit of instruction. I think it will be adorable. Okay. Yep. All right. So themes. Or I just um, want to say too, the other thing we could have is things that they could watch because they really liked the um, the bubble races. The ra no, yeah. they, they even like the uh, the the derby races that we had with the scouts and stuff like the zucchini races we could do with distancing. So bubble lady. Yeah. Uh, the, the the original hula hoop girl, not the, the second one. Yeah. Yep. Something that they could watch and they don't necessarily have to get too close or yeah. something like that. So that's yeah, I think yeah, I think it's all of those are ideas if we can get them back. I mean, don't you agree that we have a bigger draw when we can have the kids there? Absolutely. So. And maybe April can come back too. We'll see. Oh, that would be great. That was on my list to talk to her about. <laughs> all right. So Jamie put in. She started um, new uh, Google. Oh, yeah. I love the fact you guys are thinking about, you know, options and ways to make it work because I think that's important. It may not work, but thinking about it and, and trying to make it work is, is great. Aw, Bill, you yeah. made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Jamie put in um, our old themes from last year that we had chosen. Um, I don't think some of them are going to work, but I don't know. Do we, I know Pam and I were talking and we said vendors sign up, because, especially because like on certain days because of our theme. So as much as I would say, okay, we can wait on themes. On the other hand, we can't wait on themes. Or do we just not want to have themes this year? Jamie? So what about like, like um, modified themes and tell them they're going to be modified. And, you know, we've got themes. 
we're going to try to do what we can, but based on COVID, they could be modified. They could be more low key than we're used to because the reality is, is what we started June and what's going to happen in September could be vastly different in those couple of months. So we always could do it, let everybody know we're going to try our best and then just kind of whatever we can put together, we put together. What if we decided the date, each date we, we had a target? Like, okay, so hold on. We yeah, had like see, see you at the market. Uh, we had, the okay, one. so like we had, um, where's the peach? That's just peachy, was in August. So we could say, all right, so August 18th or whatever the date is, um, we can try to do, you know, peaches and that, like that kind of uh, produce, fruit. You know, we can do something with, uh, pork and bacon and meat on this specific day. Like we don't know exactly what we're going to name it, but we can at least tell them that specific week is for that product. So this is Pam. So on the application form, it said that it said last year, and I think should say again this year for themes, the names may change, but the general theme will not. So this way they know when it's, something to do with dogs or something to do with pie or something to do with fifties. No, I don't think, good. yeah, I don't think they're so concerned with the exact name of the theme, but I know that, you know, you're going to have three dog treat people who are going to want to be there on puppy day and you're going to have, you know, right. people do want the, some of the guest vendors want to know the other vendors would want to know just to play along. So it doesn't matter so much for them, but for the guest vendors, I think it matters. I actually think that our, now that I'm looking at them again, I think there might be only a couple. Do you think, um, like the cruise into the 50s, do you think that we could still have a couple cars that people would be able to look at, but obviously not touch and whatever? Do you know how that would work, Melody? I don't know, with COVID. Well, my only thing is, is that a lot of the people that have those vehicles are older. Right. So well, that's on if they're willing to come. I think it would be right. fine. People can walk by the cars and not touch them and not approach them and wear masks. But older people are going to be the ones that have the vehicles in general. Um, so it's up to them if they would want to be there at the market. All right. So and that's, a, and that's a great point what Melody's saying. So maybe what we'd want to do is move that one to September because then we or, might have time to do that. You know what I mean? If you move that one out. So okay. I wonder if we could agree like, okay, we'll keep the things from last year, but we may need to shuffle them around a little bit, depending on what they are, you know, depending. That's, on I'm going it. through the, all right. So see you at the market. That would work. That was our first market theme for la that was supposed to be for last year. I think that would work because we would have, you know, so fiber sheet. and sewing and that kind of stuff. So I think that would work. Yes. All right, yes, so then we'd have to change cruise into the 50s. We had breads and spreads for the third one. Oh my gosh, that is like the best one for the kids though. When we have them shake the butter, oh my gosh, I just love it. It's the best. Ask Melody, right? Wasn't that their favorite Melody? They loved it. It was, but it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, but it was so exciting because it was they were excited. <laughs> What if you switched 50s night with country or extraordinary? Right, that's what I'm... Hold on, be quiet. We could eat, yeah. June's a little early for honey. So maybe... So what if we do... Would breads and spreads work though for June 16th? I mean, we'd have, we have the spice people, we'd have our, our breads and all those goodies and jams and jellies and. Well, yeah, breads and spreads I think would work any week. Wait a second, so, what you, Pam, we have Be Extraordinary on February 15th. What were you saying about honey? I, I, People wouldn't be collecting honey in June quite that early. But what do we have in June that's honey? We 
We don't. I'm saying no. Could... She was saying she was okay. saying we could move the the be extraordinary from August or September to the beginning of June, but it wouldn't work. But we could do a little bit country on June 10th and 50s night on September 2nd. All right, so breads and spreads June 2nd. I mean, good grief, Charlie Brown. The 9th. Which month? June. I'm going to try and go in order. So June 2nd would be see you at the market. And then 6 9 would be uh, breads and spreads. Uh, the 16th would be a little bit country. Uh, June, because there's five weeks, and I think we should do Barry on the 30th. So what can we, we could, do we want to do Sugar Rush? Yeah, that would work. Sugar Rush on June 30th? 23rd. No, June the, the 23rd. 23rd. That might be a good one because oh. the kids will be at school. Okay. So, all right, so we moved a little bit country out of there. Sorry, I'm actually updating a spreadsheet. So, so Sugar Rush got it. Sugar Rush goes on June 23rd. <clears throat> all right. Uh, then, so the 30th would be a very sweet market. Mm hmm. Okay. Unless you want to do that one on July 7th and do red, white, and blue berry. They don't have a red, white, and blue berry. Oh, you're talking about berries? No, no, no. I'm just saying the berries are typically red and blue and right. white okay. and cream. So we could move wine and wisdom to June 30th. No, I think we need wine and wisdom at the end because if it, the wisdom people were going to be our elders, remember? And oh. so, we, so, well, we could always change it, couldn't we, to wine and, wine and dine? How about wine and wizards and all the kids get a little wand? Boom. That's a good idea. <laughs> all right, so then. Oh my God, it could be Harry Potter themed. Kids would love that. All right, so July. Wine and wizards. So June, we're on June 30th. What We're doing June 30th would be wine and wizards or warlocks or I don't know, whatever. And then a berry. I'm just spark. putting wine right now. And then, and then a berry. We could spark. do red, white, and berry again. Okay, on July seventh, correct? Yep. You all know, right. sea shanties are all the rage now. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't forget, Pam. We have barnacles and buccaneers on July twenty-first. So. Oh, we still do? Okay, good, 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 good. I didn't get that far down the list yet. Yeah, so July 24th. What's the 14th of July? Um, oh, well, when... we changed it. It was supposed to be Sugar Rush. What if we do uh, Don't Go Bake in My Heart? That's fine. All right. So then the 14th. So the, the 14th is don't, don't go bake in my heart, correct? Yes. So then we have the 21st. Are we going to leave barnacles? Yep. I'm good with that. A day. All right. We could do a day at the farm on July 28th. All right. Now the, um, the tomato one we based on when tomato season is, right? So. Yeah. I think August 11th is a good tomato season, don't you think? I think so. Bill says yes. 
Farmer Bill says, yes, it is. All right, how about if we put Puppy Love then on August 4th? Okay. And then we could keep the Tomato Day the same on August 11th. And that's just peachy. Didn't you talk to Amy Holmberg about when she wanted that to be? I did. And I would say it would probably be more around the 11th. Blah, okay. blah, blah. So you want to move the, you say tomato to August 18th then, and we'll move that's just peachy to August 11th? Yes. And if we have to, I will, I'll get in contact with Amy tonight. Okay. And if we have to change it really quick. Okay. That's fine. So then you want to keep easy as pie on the August 25th. All right. So six, nine is peachy. Tomato. I'm getting confused. Uh, I'm also easiest. working on the uh, application form. Yeah. So August, August 4th is puppy day. Puppy love. Yep. Yeah, August, August. Is puppy, then that's just peachy. You say tomato and easy as pie is August. Okay. Okay. And then we could move be extraordinary to September 1st, right? That should be good for honey. Yep. And then that could leave us, we could put cruise into the 50s all the way down on September 8th or 15th. And that gets us to the very end of the market. Yep. All right, so what do we? You want to do cruising to the fifties on the fifteenth, a little bit country on the eighth, because I know you like to keep home. You like to keep the hometown thing on the last one. Which I thought I thought we were doing a little bit country on the third of June. Oh, okay. I guess I. No, I, that's I, on. No, that's the sixteenth of June. Oh, you know what? Oh, I, yeah. You know why? Because I. Yeah. Okay. Just keep on talking. I. June second. Just to keep remember too, if we're gonna have cruise into the 50s same issue with it being an older group if it gets too cold they're not going to want to stay long yeah we did have a problem yep so why don't we do it september 8th not that cold september 8th yeah it should be okay by in september 8th as long as we don't get too, getting closer to october when did we do do we know when we did the wit wisdom people the last time because they were freezing <sighs> Oh, they were. So I would say maybe August. Mm. Well, I mean, definitely. I thought, I thought we were doing wine and wizards. Oh, this is, uh, sorry. I was, Melody's question made my brain scramble. Never mind. That was last time. All right. So. How about if we do 50s a night on September 1st and be extraordinary on September 8th? 50s a night on September 1st. And then what on September 8th? Bees. Okay. And then a little bit of country on August. No, a little bit country is June 16th. All right, so Laura, you'll have to share yours because my... Oh, mine's all messed up for some reason. All right. So, all right. Do you want to go over them? Yes. So, six two, I have see you at the market. Six nine, breads and spreads. 616, a little bit country. Uh, 623 is sugar rush. 630 is wine and wizardness. <laughs> uh, July 7th is red, white, and berry. July 14th is don't go bake in my heart. Seven, uh, July 21st is barnacles and buccaneers. Uh, July 28th is a day at the farm. August 4th is puppy love. Uh, tentatively, August 11th is peachy. That's just peachy. Uh, tentatively, August 18th is you say tomato. 
August 25th, easy as pie. Uh, September 1st, we've got the cruise into the 50s. Uh, September 8th, we have uh, Be Extraordinary. And then September 22nd, we have Hometown Heroes. So, so not to throw a monkey wrench into anything, but if we have chickens on our uh, Daisy May this year, should we have a chicken instead of Be Extraordinary? Well, we always do bee stuff. I figured uh, for um, a day at the farm. Okay, we'll focus on chickens. Okay. Chickens. Bok, bok. <laughs> all right so does anybody want to make a motion to vote on the themes uh just jamie i'll make a motion to vote on the themes for the 2021 summer market as it's well. ellen i can second all in favor aye aye hands are this all am aye all right so unanimously All right, yay, we're done with that. See how much we can whip through the rest. This All right, question. so. This is about, so we can modify those, even though we voted on them, they're not locked in stone, right? Correct. In fact, Melody could even make a note in the minutes saying, you know, <laughs> that they, they can be modified as needed. So, all right, are we good? All right, yep. so uh, vendor discussion. Do, 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 do. All right, does, does, is there like one person who likes to contact the vendors and talk to the vendors over the phone? I stink at talking over the phone. Okay, don't everybody jump at once. All right, so then, <laughs> so then how about we just do, you know, Melody? I can do some of it, maybe emailing them and calling if necessary, but I don't mind emailing and texting and whatever doing that to contact them. I don't, I don't mean our uh, new vendors for new vendors. Oh, new, new vendors. Like, like to contact them, trying to get them interested? Correct. I can do some of that, yeah. I mean, I can try. Okay. I've tried in the past and I get nowhere, so I don't know. Okay. Bill? I can, I can work with Melanie to, to do that. I mean, I don't have any trouble calling. I just don't know who to call. And yeah, usually usually um, we throw around ideas. Like, what will happen is be like, oh, Linda went to such and such a town and she saw a really great donut vendor and maybe we should try and get them for the market. So usually a lot of the contacting is – through Facebook Messenger because a lot of businesses will only reply to you through Facebook Messenger. And you can also see that they've read your email your, or your message. So you know they have gotten that message. So I didn't know of any, Miss Linda. No, I was just gonna say, I think Ellen would agree with me that when we were uh, messaging new food trucks, me Facebook Messenger, we got responses emails calls no but they're they're on messenger yeah people so, check messenger i think and again so. you see that they saw the message at least i can help do some of those and the thing is you could you can follow up with a phone call too if you need to right and i i mean i will definitely help that's not you know especially facebook i'm on facebook i don't mind facebook messaging i i would be willing to do that i mean you could come up with a generic Thing. you just copy and paste and you could do a bunch boom 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 yeah so, i just can't call people because i i'm at work all day right so and I'm I, think, willing to help. I mean so i think we, your email that's fine a lot of people are willing to help i think it's just uh organizing so we don't all call the same person or whatever i think so. this year we probably won't need a lot of new vendors um we do have some necessity space that we would need to try to fill like cheese <laughs> cheese why is cheese so hard because there's not a lot of people that make cheese <laughs> kidding <laughs> that's the biggest lie i've ever heard today <sighs> all right so 
did anybody have any issues with the vendors we had last year that they would consider not inviting them back this year? How did Chicken in the Woods do? Hen of the Woods? Yeah. I, I don't personally know what her numbers are, but I cannot oh, no. think they are very good. So her she, eggs, I will say this. I, I sat at her booth for her and sold out her eggs. But I she has no gumption to promote her stuff. Um, her setup is kind of bland. So can, can I just interrupt and say that everybody can listen to this recording later? So do we want to do this in executive session? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can't do it in executive session. We can't? Why not? You can't discuss. You can't go into executive session just to discuss people. Oh, okay. I don't think anything said was 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 um, no. bad. You know, her no. her book place could use a little flair, and um, she didn't work it. No, as but much. and she sold a ton of eggs. I yeah. mean, but that's not really an issue of not wanting her back or whatever. No, but she also did ask. I mean, she re of all the vendors, she was the most likely to ask us to cover for her, or to take her mask off every once in a while, or to eat at her booth. Well, hopefully those won't be issues this summer so much. I yeah. hope not. I hope they're never issues again. I mean, I mean, all in all, that's to me minor. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I'm not saying we don't ask her back at all. I just was curious. So, but did anybody, Pam? Did you have any issues with anybody? Um, I didn't have any issues, but I would. I did want to mention that if you have somebody that's that you consider borderline, the issue will become if we have more vendors than spaces. And then if there's someone that you think isn't the best of vendors, that then it would be better to have somebody else. I don't know how- Well, how we can it. decide this once we get our applications in. I just wanted to know for when I, you know, if I'm sending out an email or whatever, if just, I just, in general, if there was any issues last year with for anybody i don't think so overall it was great so okay um miss linda and ellen food trucks i had an email pam forwarded um from a food truck vendor wanting full-time and i full-time i know is not possible um but what do you think I mean, what are you limiting to? I know originally it was six, half a market. Um, we'll have to see how many applications we get. Last year we did have to limit it, but we're down a few food trucks. Um, Savage Spatula has ceased operations. Macon Bacon okay. has ceased operations, and he was only one or two markets a year. Um, we already know that Greek and Out wants a lot. We know that the um, G Monkey wants to come back. We've both we've been we've heard from them already. I think. So it just, it depends. I mean, we didn't have a lot of like barbecue stuff last year. We had pizza almost every week. And I think that that went well. So if there's a new vendor to replace Spatula, I think they had six dates. A lot well, of my, question is, my question is more for the application because I'd like to put something on the application that maybe just says, you know, maybe limited to six dates or up to six dates or so it's eight because eight eight was half a market so that's eight what we half a last market. year okay. um we had 60 people wanted something like 60 spots and however we only had three times 16 is whatever that is right and so we never we had heard back from a couple people and we never heard back. Well, yeah, because they weren't going to do it during COVID. So I would say um, nobody gets more than eight like we did last year because that gives us maximum variety. All right. So maybe um, on, just on the application saying apply for up to eight dates. But, but 
but, right, but big but. but. But you, there are some there are some food trucks that I wouldn't want to see there eight times. Yeah. Like I personally wouldn't want to see a pizza vendor there eight times because there's so many different pizza vendors. I thought last year we we limited food trucks limited to four times or something like that. No, no it was no. I think Yoko Loco had seven and everyone else was limited to six, something like that. Yeah. No. Everybody was limited to no more than eight. And then when we got together and we made the schedule, nobody got more than seven because right. we had so many applicants. Right. That's what I'm saying. You could apply for up to eight dates. And I will say that Supreme Hot Dog is planning to come back this year. So uh, we have to decide if we're going to treat him as a regular food truck or something on the side. I personally think he needs to be a regular food truck. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I do too with, with this whole COVID thing. And Yeah. So on the application form, it says half season, $85, four to eight markets, guest vendor, $25, up to three markets. So nobody gets to even fill in more than eight dates. Okay. But I think for food trucks, there should be something on there. That's say... the food. Go ahead. No, is there something saying that? That's what it says on the food truck. There's only eight spots for them to write in a date. Okay. So maybe have like a little amendment on like a star or something just saying you can apply, but you may not get that many spots depending yep. on interest. Yep. Why don't you say like additional spots may be available um, on a first come first serve basis or something like that? And then we always have a rotating substitute list. We do have cancellations throughout the season and we've usually been able to fill those pretty quickly. Right. So this is Bill. Um, is it more about how many we have or how, or not, you know, for example, getting two pizza vendors or two hot dog vendors? You know, we do that with the market to try to deconflict vendors. Is that, does that make sense? It's, it's partially because we have, like, I think the only repeat yes. similar vendors is really um, the pizza vendors, but um, we just, it, there's so much interest in it and we get so many applications. <laughs> we try to give everybody a chance, but it's also, we don't want to repeat the same things depending on what our theme is, depending on who was there last. It's just too much. So, all right. I will say the last summer there wasn't really any competing food vendors from the no. food truck side. No, well, well, that, we did. That's ahead, because uh, myself and Ellen and Linda had a huge piece of paper and we had a post-it note for every requested date for every food truck yep. application and we we purposefully didn't have the same food yeah well at the good same job. time so yeah well good good job it worked plus, yeah plus it we was have, plus we had some ben, uh food truck that dropped out because of covid so there actually were a few in the mix that didn't get in the mix yep there were a couple um, the people out of Waterford, the blue truck, what's it called? I can't remember. Um, shoot, I can't believe I can't remember her name. But anyway, they weren't in last year. She apologized after we had started putting the schedule together and dropped all her dates. Do we know if Yoko Loco is going to keep doing the food truck once they get the restaurant open? Yes, they are. I asked okay, them. Good. Great. That, that was uh, Curb Your Appetite. That's, thank you. I was really, I was going to think of it in about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have another 60 requested spots of the 48 that we're going to have. So. So, so I have a question. Um, I assume the food trucks are a, not that we're out to make money, but are net positive in terms of um, <clears throat> our financially. And I, I guess what I'm wondering is, I mean, there's, you go to places where it's all just food trucks. And I'm not saying that's what we should do, but is there a downside to having 
as opposed to four, six, or eight? Because it does seem to be a popular, um, and we have the space, we have plenty of space, it, it, you know. We you know. had a few vendors complain. We had one vendor say he didn't ever want to be there again when another guy was there because they were both selling hot dogs. We had the macaroni and cheese truck who I believe withdrew for other reasons. But at the end, he said, oh, it's too bad that you started having four, four trucks there every week. Most of the trucks seem to do very well. Um, but I think when we moved down, we decided to just um, to hold it to three. Well, you know, may maybe this year is a good year to keep keep it the same and kind of because it's a co last year was a COVID year and it's, you know, it's too hard to <clears throat> evaluate. And sometimes we do have four. Usually, Max, we, we have four. It's there's some days that we know we're going to be extra busy so that we have the fourth food truck, but we, we try to limit it because that way the food trucks do a good business and not lose out money, so. So to piggyback on Bill's question, and I, I think we thought about this last year a little bit is, uh, do we wanna charge the food trucks more? I was because just many thinking that. farmers markets charge the food trucks a lot of money to be there and I'm not saying we should charge them a lot of money but maybe instead of $25 a spot it's 30 and then the full year could be whatever you know the right ratio is to increase it you know maybe it's a hundred dollars for four to eight markets and it's thirty dollars for a single I'm fine with that, as long as it's an incremental increase, because they're all small business owners, too. Some of them have had terrible years, and some of them have made it. Based on their lines last year, and I waited in some of them. Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, it was, the, but if, if you all remember, we had a hard time because the lines were actually crossing over to where our people were coming into the market. So I have no problem um, increasing the price, particularly if we're the cheapest around and we could still go up and still be the cheapest around. I think that that's completely fair. I do every, too. Every vendor sold out of items at least on at least one time that they were there. Like yep. every week it was like, oh man, got to place order quick because they're going to sell out of blah, blah, blah. It happened every yeah. single week. I mean, some people would get there after work at 5.15 or 5.30 and two of the food trucks would be completely sold out already, basically. So, I mean, if it, it's a... I agree with Pam. I think they should raise their prices. I, so I do too. Kind of with that. So Pam, do you happen to know the going price of a, a spot for a food truck? I think commentary is like 60. A, for one day, one spot? Yeah, the Coventry right. is really expensive. I, I I think I would make a motion to increase half season to a hundred, and increase a uh, single spot to thirty. Is that not enough? I I think it's fine. I mean, it's a small increase. We don't want to just double on them. You know what? We could try out the increase, see how many complaints we get or not, and then kind of go from there for next year. What was the, what was the motion? What's to that? increase the price of a half season for a food truck from $85 to $100, and okay, to increase that. the guest vendor price from $25 to $30. Thank you. Second. Is that just for the food trucks? Just for the food trucks. Okay. Bill seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 All hands are up. All right. Unanimous. Uh. Are All right. Bill, did you second that? Yes. Bill seconded that. Thank you. All right. So I sent around the, for the discussion of possible action regarding market logo 2021. All right. So that was our brainstorm. 
it's just a mock-up that we sent the three different chickadee chick chick ones i know everybody has different opinions on them i mean do we want to do chickens this year adorable love them i really liked it he does a good job okay he's way better than me so so this is good all right so who liked the more cartoony oh yes linda I was just going to say, I'll be in the minority. I thought it was way too busy. And, but I love the, I love the idea. If I you could mute Linda, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I well, I know that's, that's just going to be what the postcard looks like. That's not like what the bag design is going to look like. He can, but, um, that there were too many colors. <laughs> you're you're Pete's favorite person now. Well, I'm sorry. Should I not no, be no, honest? No, really, you're... because that's what he said. He okay, said I loved it, and I loved all those chickens all over the place. I loved it. There, <laughs> no, that better? but he always tells me there's too much color, so that's why I said you're his favorite person yeah. because he will agree yeah. with that. And remember, I'm looking at it at how it's going to look on Facebook, mm -hmm. and I think on Facebook, simple designs work better. Yeah. And that's a valid that's a valid point, Linda. So we can we can declutter it. Not only that, he can make you whatever you want to put yeah, on Facebook. Take the chickens off the, the banner. Mm -hmm. I think we Jamie? need one chicken on there. I love Daisy May. I think oh, I do too. I, I do love too. her. I love her thing. I did. He as changed well. the colors a little bit on it, so it's a little different. Yeah, I just, I love Daisy May. Love I think her. we need an egg in there somewhere. I was going to suggest that too. So what if, what if I, you, you reduce the chickens or chicks down, maybe only have one or two and a little egg somewhere. Take it off the, take it away from the words. Yeah. Oh yeah, take it off of opening day. Yep. But maybe I put really... a little, maybe put a little egg in the uh, flower wreath. Oh, it could be an egg nest, a nest of eggs. On the tractor? Oh, oh, yeah, or maybe the eggs could be the zero zero at the four o'clock and the zero zero at the seven o'clock could be eggs. And the 20, the zero in 2021 could be eggs. Oh, yeah, opening day. Oh, opening egg. He'll play with it. I just wanted to, to get um, feedback. Yes, Linda? What if you took the tra tractor out? That's my, I think that we need to have one. Yeah, there's too much happening. I would, if we got rid of the tractor and had Daisy May, I think that'd be great. That's what I think too, but. Can cool. We, are we, are we all okay with getting rid of the tractor? Uh, can we see yeah. with and without the tractor? We had, yep. a, we had a Debbie Chavis join. Oh, no, she disappeared. No, oh, no, here. she's there. Hi, Debbie. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm fine. I live in Gales Ferry. And I'm just trying to view uh, regarding the uh, fair, maybe in Alice's Acres. Okay, well, we're here for a Farmer's Market Commission meeting. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. You know, try to throw with me. I like the chickens. I do too. Yes, okay, so so, so we're, we're all in favor of chickens. Okay, so here's the second question. Do we like the cartoonier chickens, which I know Jamie and Melody don't like, or do we like the more drawn out chickens? The chickens on the bottom are the cuter fluffer ones. Yes. So, so for me, just with my marketing background, which is nothing like you. Turn on my light. <laughs> Um, the, the problem is, is that the, that the, um, Daisy May 
she's in one type of media, right, Pete? Yeah. And then the, the chickens, I think, need to be in the similar, whether Daisy Mae's watercolor or whatever, I feel like those need to match. Otherwise, they don't look cohesive. That was just my opinion. Right, which that bottom one, I think, matches up a lot better. Matches a, I, I personally think it matches a lot better. Yeah. And I also have, and you probably too, I have a Shutterstock account that I can pull pictures off of. So if you ever want to log into my account and grab them, if you don't have it already, you can do that too. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to smile more. Lori said I look miserable. I'm not miserable. <laughs> okay, so... I like the font on the Ledger Farmer's Market. What font is that, Pete? Brandbolt, B-R-A-N-N-B-O-L-T. I can send it to you if you want it. Would you? Yeah, because I use Canva, and that would be great. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so... Do we have... Is majority of the chickens on the bottom, the fluffy ones, or the top? Bill, what do you think? Do you not really care? <laughs> yeah, I'm not in this discussion. It's way beyond me. <laughs> okay. So, Pam, you were the one that liked the cartoony ones. I do, but I know I'm I fine. like them too. But I don't mind the other ones either. So I'm fine with either. I think the cartoony ones. Um, are more like the bees we had last year and they go with the 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 flower wreath isn't quite as realistic as the cow that's why i don't think they clash quite as much but i'm fine with either all right all right so pete will work on that mm. do that um we can put off talking about the budgets and stuff to the next meeting or should we just set a budget? I have, Jamie. I was gonna say, I think we should table it just cause we didn't have um, April here tonight to talk about. Yeah, so, numbers. and then, all right. So we'll go to uh, storage space. All right, so I talked to Fred and he messaged me back today. Um. The fair is still storing their stuff in the sheds, but they would be willing to sell one to the market so that it would be ours, ours alone. Nobody's going to go in there and touch our stuff, move it around. Tables That's won't great. go missing. So there's that option. <clears throat> um, and then Fred said in the, between the time, if we do purchase one and then they get their stuff out, we could store stuff in the red barn um ham and do we have the option of leaving the stuff in the old chowder booth till we can if we decide to move into one of the sheds yeah i don't see why we can't leave it there for a little bit um just don't brag that it's in there <laughs> oh no i no i i mean there are people at church who seem to think that's a, it's a historic building but the building's not historic. However, the actual chowder pots and stuff that are in there are. So as long as we're careful about the antiques that are in there, I don't think it's a problem. Okay, so at least we have the option of storing it in two separate places if we decide to purchase one of the barns. That's great. Did, do, did we, you know do we want to purchase one of the barns? I know we discussed it before. I mean, the shed. I Jamie? think it would be a good idea. I do too, because too many people go through our stuff. Ooh. Can I say something? Oh. <laughs> go ahead. Whoever wants to go first, go first. P Pam. Remember the one tent that was broken and wouldn't go upright? Mm-hmm. I fixed it. Oh, congratulations. And now that okay, I say someone, someone fixed it and I witnessed it being fixed is probably more accurate. But it's so, fixed. <laughs> yeah, so this is Bill. I think if we can purchase one of those sheds that are down there, which are pretty substantial, some of them, 
I think that's a perfect solution. Okay. Uh, Long-term solution. Everything now is sort of temporary. How, right. how you know? What, Bill, what do you think is a, oh, go ahead, Jamie. I was just going to say, I, I would like to purchase one as well, but I would like to inspect it before we purchase it. Some of them have been there for a long time. And if you look at how they care for some of the other equipment, it doesn't look like they take very good care of stuff. So if we could just see it before. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Well, All right. You know, I think we can make them a very attractive offer because what are they going to do with it? You know, haul it, put it on a flatbed and haul it away. Yeah, so, I, I was told they don't have the space for all of them anyway. So I mean, it would just be money for them to have set aside for the rest of the fair. So you do it as a donation. So there's no, you know, issue of sales tax or anything. You just say, we're going to donate so much money to the fair committee to. In exchange for their shed. So, okay. So should we vote on a maximum amount e amount of money to offer them. Like obviously we're gonna start low. View the you know, first we view them and then obviously make an offer. I think we need to, to go over and actually look at the sheds. I mean I've seen the outside of them. I haven't seen the inside and I don't know how you I don't feel comfortable going in there. All right. So I think so we we'll table this until the next meeting or another I think, meeting. I think we need to get a hold of the fair committee and ask them if they can, we can gain access to, to the sheds that are over there. Okay. That's, Pam I mean, or Linda, you're, you're in contact with the um, fair, correct? I know you both just talked to. Yes, Sarah Blenderman, yep. Is, could you? Yep. Ask and, and see if we can get together or give her my email or yeah, I'll, I'll, however you want to do it. Out. Yep, I will okay. read it out. Yep. Miss Jamie? I was just going to say, we look at it, we determine the condition, we go online, we find out what a used shed is worth, and we make an offer based on there because there's a convenience factor for us too. Right. You know what I mean? We don't have to have it shipped. We don't have to like, because you have to have underneath underneath the sheds, it has to be prepped. We wouldn't have to do that. I mean, I think there's additional savings just for the convenience. So, so we'll have Linda reach out. We will gain access to check out the barns. Maybe me, Bill, Jamie can go over, look, um, do some research on them. And then at the next meeting, we can set an amount to make an offer. Sound good? That sounds great. Giddy up. All right. Discussion, um, possible action regarding new items needed for 2021-2022 market season and budget. All right. So this is going to kind of tie into one of the other discussions. And that is uh, entering and exiting the market. Um, the town, and I think we discussed this last year, the town now that businesses are open in the Ledger Center area want to try to get, have as little traffic as possible using the Ledger Center egg entrance. Um, they have widened and have redone the, where the exit is. It is that we were exiting out of last year. It is wide. Now, wider now and it will fit traffic flowing both ways and that's the way they would like people to come in and out so I would like to purchase maybe three more a-frames and possibly a banner to go out on the front wall or maybe not even a banner but what I would like to do is have um, a couple a few a-frame signs um, one maybe to put at the entrance of the Ledger Center entrance and it ha says Ledger Farmers Market entrance, this, you know, with an arrow. And then maybe one down by the uh, light. And, and then one at the actual entrance that says enter exit, Pete. 
would that still be the exit as well? Yes, it would say enter exit. So would it, it can accommodate incoming and outgoing traffic? Okay. Yes, I talked to Fred. Yep, absolutely. Um, the, this is Pam. I think we might need one more A-frame in front of the library to push people down a little bit farther. What do you mean? So we so so everybody's used to going in at the school. Right. So we need a sign to get them to go past the school. A sign at the light to get them to turn. I think we might need one more sign at the library so that they keep going. You, you know what we can do? We can put that third sign by the library entrance. And then maybe April can tie some balloons to the entrance and exit of the farmer's market. Okay. Just something that says we're there. Okay. I mean, I know that we close the gates after the vendors are in, but people get there early, which means they're going to be trying to drive in that way while the vendors are coming in too. Whereas before they could drive in early by the school and it weren't in anybody's way. So. Okay. We could also have Linda do posts about the new, you know. Right. And then we can put it in the newsletter. And, and that type of thing too. Because I really feel like most of our traffic is driven from Facebook. So if, if that's where it's coming from, I think that will alleviate most of it. You may still have 10, 20% that are trying to figure it out. How about cones? So that the ins and outs, they can only be on this, that side and they can right. only be on that side rather than you driving know, We can the ask middle. public works. To put, we also could ask him to draw the, the white line down the center, right? I yeah. asked Fred about it. He said he wasn't sure. I think he kind of was like, hey, people could use their brains, but. Yeah. Public Works doesn't have cones, I don't believe, to get to loan. Maybe we should buy some of our uh, own. That's what my suggestion was. Didn't they offer up an LED sign for the begin for last season? They did. Yeah. Man, that would be awesome. Linda, where do we get the cones from last year that we had to put out each time? From the um, food pantry. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, we need to. We need but to. we borrowed them from the town, but at, at this stage, I don't even yeah. know where they are. Yep. Well, good. If we're going to buy our own, let's make them not so heavy. They have uh, the little light plasticky ones. This is Bill. I mean, it's going to be an education going forward because people don't really understand the whole issue with, uh, you know, the commercial ledger center school versus the town. But I mean, I see no reason. And, and that whole entrance by um, Floyd's, I mean, most people don't even know, unless they came to the farmer's market and ex exited out that way, don't even know that is there. I mean, it'll be a bit of a, you know, a, a learning curve, but I think it's fine. Well, I think we're going to have to, I mean, we could even cone off the, uh, like the area the scouts were in, we could even cone that off so people don't drive out that way either. So, but. Um, I can do up a map for a uh, Facebook post, Linda. So. That would be good. I, I, I'm wondering if we should paint the lines ourselves on that road because people are just going to run the cones over and they're going to get trashed. I'm sure we can do that. It, it's it's but still early enough. To... We can go ahead. No, you go ahead. I'm just thinking we're going to have to set them out and pick them up every week, and then people are going to run them over. Yeah. So if we did a line, that would be good. To... We could do. I mean, we could do both, yeah. but a line would be good too. Well, I'll talk to Fred and see what Public Works has to say about it because I know they. It's still going to be, you know, a while before they finish that up. Um, and also, I'm just going to do this out of order because it just ties in with this whole thing. Um, parking. So, Scouts did not like doing it last year at all. Um, the parking area where they're installing lights, we will have, we will be all lit up for the farmer's market. Um, 
according to Fred, they are putting in, are they wood, Jamie? So they're going to yeah, be so, so if you look up, if you go to the top, the top where we used to be, you'll notice that they put in wooden, like a wooden railing with two posts on each side, almost like you could sit on them. Yeah. Those are going to be from, from street light, street light to street light to street light. So it is, it delineates where the parking is. So everybody will know exactly where they need to park now. It's not just going to be an open, you cannot, you, it's not just going to be open anymore. So you'll notice that the street lights are in a line and in between those street lights, they will, there will be wooden, like tiny wooden fences. So people know you can pull up to each side because that was part of the problem last year, even with the scouts, they weren't parking people enough distance apart from each other that they could pull out again. So that, that won't be a problem at all. It's going to be so self-explanatory, like pulling into a parking lot without the stripes. So there won't be lines. They're not going to line it. I don't think they're going to line it, but it is going to be very self-explanatory. Like, like you'll pull in and you will know exactly where to park. Not only that, I think that parking lot is huge. It's, it's huge. It's bigger than the one up at Legend Center. And what is it? 200 and something car or something crazy. Yeah. Fred said it was almost 300 cars could fit in there. So I don't think that we really need anybody to be parking this year. I, I just think we need to let people park. I, I, I mean, we're, we're volunteers and there's only so much we need to be worrying about. And I don't think parking people should be one of them, but that may be me alone that thinks that. I agree. I mean, it's no different than when I take my kids to the baseball game down at Pfizer Field. There's a huge dirt parking lot and nobody's out there telling the parents where to park, but people figure it out. And now we're going to have, it looks like a legitimate parking. It's going to look like a legitimate parking lot. I don't think it's going to be a problem personally. So, but that's something we'll be looking at, obviously, when the town is done with it. So, oh, are we... Are we not going to have any scout support at all, or just they don't want to? Park? I don't know. I can I can talk to Vince and see what he says. I I know they just they we burned they them prefer, out. I think they would prefer not to, but I don't. They may volunteer in a different capacity. That I can talk to him about. I just think um, it was a lot for them. I think the parents really ended up being the ones that yeah. really get a lot of the time. Well, just as a, um, an aside, um, you know, they had some value because they helped set up, helped take down. They, they were a great, besides the parking, they were a, a great resource. Um, you know, uh, incentivize, can we provide them with, you know, a donation to the troop or something like that? We did do that too. We did that this past summer. But we collect so, that was a collection, right? We No, we did both. We did both. We did both. We collected um, and then we matched the collection. So I can ask Vince. I mean, maybe they want to just come and help set up. I mean, breakdown seems to be easier than yeah. setting up. So yeah. I mean, Melody. Great oh, resource. They always, they always, have, they always go ahead, have, Bill. Well, they, they seem to have more kids than was necessary so i think a lot of them just kind of like that uh, that was also part of the problem was that there was too many kids for it but as a troop i think it's just all who signs up when they sign up kind of thing so i'll i can talk to vince see if they want to do anything in a capacity and we can always just go from there melody i was just saying that we also gave them italian ice as treats while they were there so i mean right. there was a, there was incentive for them to help it's not like yeah right it's not like it's free i, I mean personally i like what did you say pete i i personally i loved having the scouts there i thought it tied in the community it was it's always great seeing scouts active in the community i'm a big supporter of scouts um but if it's, if, you know, if they're... Right. Well, it's, it's my thing is, it's, it's going to be their decision. They can totally come. That's not what well, I'm saying. Out to the Girl Scouts this year and do equal ERA. 
So I think it's all just scouts now, aren't? Isn't it? There were because there were girls there last year, isn't it? Just scouts. Girls now? can join. Girls can now join the Boy Scouts. There are still oh, Girl Scouts, I believe. Okay. The next cool. differentiator is popcorn versus cookies. Right, right, right. So, um, so do we need to vote on a budget for any of this stuff yet, or can we wait another month? Do you think? Come up with a list of things we need to buy. All I'm right. not sure what we need to buy. Right. So we'll, we can hold off and continue the discussion at the next meeting. Oh, I do know two things. We need to buy a cash box. Oh. The elusive cash box that we've yes. been needing to buy for the last three markets. So, uh, and then you were mentioning A-frames and shelving. Possibly some metro shelving or something. Right, I have that on my list. You do? Okay, great. Yep. So, but we will see what we're going to be putting shelves in before we do that. So yeah, definitely. So we'll get a list going and then go from there for the budget. Um, are we good with that discussion? Anybody else? Um, for the bags and the shirts, I already emailed Amy at r and Apparel. And she sent me a bunch of links to look at. So I've already got that in motion. Um, and that's pretty much the last thing on my list there. Anybody else? So All I right. will work on the applications tomorrow and get those okay. final up, finalized so that you can mail them out to the vendors. Perfect. Uh, let's see, discussion of possible action regarding new purchase orders. I will Amy. table. I will table that because April is not here. All right. So I know we did this. Yeah, Jamie, Miss Jamie. So, um, do we just want to talk about really quick? Because normally, what we do every year is um, I send out the the newsletter, but it's really not a newsletter. It's just the invite for people to apply for the vendors to start applying. Mm. Um, and normally, we do that in February. So is that something that we want to have a target date for? Yeah, we can do it. Today's Thursday. I can send out the email Monday. So do we, do we want to do Monday? Does that give you enough time or can, do you want Pete to do it? Cause I know Pete was going to take over newsletters. Yeah, Pete's going to take over newsletters. So that's fine. And then I can just send the sample that I had from last year. So he sees I have it. it. I can forward it. I can just show it to okay. Pete. So Pete, are you going to use SurveyMonkey or do you have a different platform? Not SurveyMonkey, <laughs> Constant Contact? I'll, I'll do whatever you want. No, well, don't you, you must have a newsletter program that you use because I'm just saying I... Well, I know Constant Contact or MailChimp, so but okay. if the contacts are already in Constant Contact, it doesn't make sense to export them and import them into something else. So that's that's fine. No, I have all I have all the contacts separately that I can send you in an email in an Excel yeah. file. But Just Jim because I was using my constant contact as work and the farmers market and it would be nice if I could finally make that separation if we got you know if we could either buy a subscription or whatever. But it would be nice if I could separate those two because it's cluttering my work stuff. Pam yeah. I can Does, work with get to get our own independent uh, one set up. That's that's no big deal. Okay. But I, I don't want to step on your toes with this e-blast stuff. Oh, I'm happy to, for you to take it. You clearly, I mean, you you are marketing. That's what you do. So it totally makes sense that you would take that over. Okay. Um, Pam, Thanks. does mm -hmm. this Monday give you enough time to do the applications or do you want to wait one more week? No, I can get them to you. The other thing we would need to do... Um, Let's get the applications to Heidi for the website. And I don't know when the uh, crop plans come out for 2021. Oh, I, they those, don't just use the same ones over and over again? Well, they change the year and stuff, you know, it's kind of a formality.
So we would want to have. Um, so when do the crop plant, do, do the crop plants, they have to be submitted with the application, correct? Correct. When do they usually come out? Um, I don't know. In your experience? I don't know. I never paid attention to when they came out. They were just there when I needed them. Um, what if, Pete, can you? I can look and see if they're, if they're ready. Okay. And then if not, we can just let me know. We can come up with another strategy. Because, I mean, is there, should we send out the invites if the crop plans aren't out? I'm looking right now. Oh, okay. I think we could just, you know, what we could do, we could take the 2020 crop plan because it won't be any different for 2021. And then when they're switched, we'll switch them on, on the uh, spread on the website. Okay. Um, Cause I was going to see if Pete, if that was something that you could copy and paste or whatever, and then just change the 2020 to 2021. Yeah. It's just a PDF. Is it a PDF, Pam, or? You, I don't remember. Or J, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, no problem. I'll find it and get it to you, Pete. Yeah, if JPEG, t whatever, whatever it is, no problem. Okay. All right, so then we'll do that. Pete, change crop plan date. All right. So we got that. Anything else anybody can think of? Okay. Uh, so last year with COVID and having to get so many things and wanting, not wanting to have like a million special meetings, um, I know we had authorized the market manager, that being Pam, um, to make purchases, to approve and open purchases herself up to $1,500. So do we want to do that again? Yes. So that it doesn't have to be a vote every single time? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So I will make a motion to authorize the market manager to open and approve purchase orders and invoices for the 2021-2022 market season in an amount of up to $1,500 for uh, the farmer's market itself, marketing and safety and sanitation. Second. Second. All in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Hands are up. All right, unanimous. All right, and we are almost done. Uh, let's see. We already talked about parking, the exit. Okay, so Mr. Bill, Matthew, can you, Matthew, Pete, what? Will you grab, will you grab the, oh, grab the paper I printed out, please. So Bill wonderfully brought up a n new uh, proposal that planning and zoning is trying to put through. Um, thank you for farmers markets, outdoor farm, outdoor farmers markets and fairs, um, including town fairs. Um, right now under the, uh, current zoning regulations, <laughs> they're not really allowed, but they've just, but we've been having one. Um, so what they're trying to do is, um, and in state a regulation that says town fairs and farmers markets will have to um, permit per pay for a permit to have the farmers markets and the fairs on town property. So um, they haven't put it in motion yet um, and they haven't worked out the details. They may do it um, on a per day they may do it month to month. They, they're not sure how they're doing it yet. 
but it only affects when we're outside. So for winter market, that's not a, it's not going to be an issue, but I thank Bill for bringing that to my attention and our attention because I had no idea. Um, so this is Bill. Um, I don't think we have to pay because we're a town committee. I think uh, there's an exception for town functions in terms of paying for permits. So I think we're out of that, although that's um, probably a minor issue. Um, but, you know, I, I think they were, so it, it gets into this issue where they're not specifically allowed. Uh, so therefore they, you know, weren't allowed in the past and we sort of ignored it. So I think it's a good thing that they're actually- Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. Farmers market, but it's, it's very vague. It just sort of, just as right now, it's just sort of a paragraph that says, you know, talks about for-profit and in our case, not-for-profit farmers markets and talks about the two produce vendors per without any other restrictions in terms of um, parking uh, uh, limitations. And, and I don't think we have any issue because we're in this great location um, down by the, uh, you know, in the town green area. So I don't think it's a big impact for us, um, but uh, it is kind of this one paragraph that they have, what, it's like, Four, I think it's two sentences, four lines, and and I don't think it's going to impact us much. Um, so I don't think it's a big deal, and I think right now it's probably pretty early to be um, bringing it up at this time. But it's something we might want to keep an eye on if they start. Right, to talk. and and I'm sure, and I'm sure our lovely town liaison will keep us up to date on it, um, and it let us know. It oh, read oh, Jay. Oh, go ahead. No, no, All I'll say is having attended many, many, many planning and zoning meetings over the years, hopefully it's in my lifetime that they actually pass it. Um, <laughs> because they have to go to public hearing, then they extend the public hearings, and it'll, it'll be a while. I bet, it, I bet, I could be wrong, but I bet it'll be after the season by the time they ever get to it. And they'll discuss it a lot. I mean, they'll, they'll talk about it a lot. I assumed it wouldn't affect us till next year, but at least we're all aware of it now. Yep. And thank you to Bill for that. Yep. Linda, I, just one question I have for, you know, it talks about the winter market and it's regulated by the retail um, uh, section of the zoning. Does that mean like we can't have it in churches if the churches aren't in a retail um zoning no, area. no di no different than the church doing a fair um i don't believe so okay yep all right any anybody else have new business i can't right. believe we're doing another market <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right well if there's no other business I make a motion to adjourn this meeting at 7.10 p.m. I, I will sec second. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good job on your first meeting. As, yep. Good uh, job. Uh, thank, right. you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Pete. Yeah. Uh, if you go to the Ledyard Farmers Market webpage. Yeah. The crop forms are on the web page awesome i'll check it out tonight and all you have to do is change the date to 2021 sorry awesome. you need to stop recording are we still recording yeah, yeah. sorry hold on i'll do that tonight pam <laughs>